This is uh, Chris Bloom. I'm the board president of the Mid City Neighborhood Organization. Thanks for coming this evening to our December community meeting. Um, if you hadn't seen the agenda for this evening, it went out with our earlier today with our newsletter. I'm putting a link to that uh, in the chat here. Uh, we did have one cancellation. Um, David Hecht from Formwork Development was uh, gave us a late notice for cancellation. Uh, but we'll be talking about that uh, at that time. So um, if you're not familiar with neighborhood, neighborhood Mid-City Neighborhood Organization, we're a group of volunteers with a civic-minded focus on quality of life for residents of Mid-City. And in order to do that, we formed a governing body of board members. And tonight we are going to be holding our annual elections, which we hold every year. We currently have uh, five positions. Uh, sorry, uh, my mistake. Let me double check that. It's uh, we we alternate five and six every other year. We serve terms of two years, and we have uh, some members that are rolling off, and uh, we have some vacancies this evening, and a few members that are interested in seeking uh, their position going forward. And I believe we have three new vacancies on the board and uh, three interim uh, incumbent members on the board speaking their positions. Uh, I am only going to go in alphabetical order, but um, so of our current board members, Claire Byan is, is here this evening. Um, Claire, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Claire. Um, I live on South Scott Street, kind of near um, Mona's. And I lived in Mid City for only a year, but I was editor of Mid City Messenger for about four years. So I know the area well. Great. Uh, also, Thomas uh, was unable to make the, uh, the meeting this evening due to another commitment. He's currently serving as board chair. Uh, he wanted me to share that he's been a resident since 1998. Uh, he's been a member of MCNO off and on through that time. Uh, plus, he's very active with our porch crawl and event planning. Uh, so he served as chair for the last year and also as a block captain for his own H. And if there's uh, anything you wanted to ask Thomas, he's a resident at uh, 3823 Iberville Street. Um, and then also we have Becker Rutledge, who's on the call as well. Do you want to introduce yourself, Becker? Hey, I'm Becker Rutledge. I have been on the board for quite some time, and I've been the treasurer for quite some time. Y'all who know that know how long it's been. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, all the time I've been spending with everybody, and I'm happy to volunteer to help the neighborhood. So. I'm happy to go ahead and keep going forward because this year was kind of a dud. <laughs> We're looking forward to next year. <laughs> More activity. Absolutely. Uh, Becker's been uh, Oh, yeah, I live on board. South Scott also. Two houses down from Claire. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Thank no, no problem. Thank you, Becker. Um, and then of uh, previous interest uh, for... New candidates this evening for the board, uh, Mary Mycin Gabala. Did you want to introduce yourself this evening? Well, I think you're still on mute. Do we have a microphone problem again? Google is up. Oh. Is that better? That is. Ah, well. Wow. <laughs> I'm Mary Mycin Gabala. And I live over on South Genoa, and I've lived in Mid City since 1994. Been active with Mid City Neighborhood Organization for a bunch of years, and am willing to do things that I can to help the neighborhood get better. Thank you so much. Um, those are our only uh, pre-declared candidates for the board this evening. Uh, I do want to put a motion out and see if there's any nominations from the floor or current attendees at the meeting now would like to be considered for a board position? 
Chris. Yes, sir. This is Bob Rivard. Yeah, this is Bob Rivard. I'd be interested in a board position. All righty. Uh, you want to introduce yourself, Bob? I lived in mid -city. Sure, I'm Bob Rivard. I live on Bank Street between Jesuit and the cemeteries. Lived in Mid City since 1979. Uh, had an office, law office in Mid City since 1985. Uh, before being an attorney, I was a probation parole officer, raised three children, all of them went to public schools in New Orleans. And I've been on Mid City uh, neighborhood organization off and on. Probably my biggest involvement was just after Katrina. Uh, Mid-City Neighborhood Organization was one of the uh, organizations starting the Broad Community Connections, and I was on the founding board of that. That's the organization that uh, put the is responsible for Whole Foods being on Broad Street now. Um, I'm interested in you know, crime control and, and safety, uh, neighborhood development, financial development, and uh, be interested in being on the board. Thank you so much for your interest, Bob. Okay. Thanks for coming tonight. Sure. All right. Um, any other nominations from the floor? Going once, going twice. All right. So we have three uh, incumbents seeking their positions once again, and then two new positions. That leaves one vacancy to our board. Um, if you look at our bylaws, I believe we have a minimum of seven members and a maximum of 11. So we can move forward with this. Um, and I would like to propose a motion to memberships in attendance tonight um, to adopt the slate. Um, since we don't, since we have more seats than interested parties, I feel like uh, filling them with willing participants and assets to our current board and future makeup of this organization is probably the best way to go during these times. Um, outreach has been difficult and new membership and recruitment has also uh, been lacking uh, without many events and things to promote during this time. So uh, the board always reserves a right during its operations to appoint members to fill vacancies and we can do so. But if no one else is interested in filling um, our last position on the board, I propose this motion to adopt um, these five candidates and move forward with elections as complete. So uh, maybe a show of hands of current members and anyone who's on the phone, if you are in favor, say aye. 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 Four, five, six, seven. See, so that's I count seven, mm -hmm. eight votes for that of current members. Anyone opposed? Say nay. Or raise your hand. Eight members. Any other comments? Thank you all. I feel like that's uh. You know, I, I would love a, f a full lever member board, but it's not about quantity, it's quality. I think we can definitely get a lot of things done and stay engaged with the best interests of residents of the neighborhood. So welcome aboard and uh, thank you to all attending board members and outgoing board members. I wanna thank you, Jessica Pfeiffer uh, and Dorian for serving their time on the boards, whereas jo Jordan Sachs, who's no longer a resident of Mid-City, um, but also served his time on the board for this uh, for this past term. So uh, thank you all to the outgoing and welcome to the new incoming board members. Congratulations. All right. Um, I knew that was going to be quick and easy, so I wanted to move forward with the rest of the agenda. That's why I put that motion first. Um, so Mr. Councilmember Giarusso, you are first up on the agenda. Do you want to give us any updates from the council? Hey, Chris. Good evening. Good evening to everybody. I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to try and be very quick, although I'm happy to answer um, inquiries within the time period. Chris, a lot. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is, I think, as everybody knows, the council passed the budget at the end of November. Obviously, lots of tough things that we had to do. 
uh, particularly almost every agency taking close to a 20 percent um, haircut. Uh, the the only the only kind of couple that really didn't were NOFD and NOPD, obviously because of the public safety implications involved with them. Those um, two did still have, um, from a monetary standpoint, I would say a significant reduction uh, by percentage. I think they were eight and nine percent um, across the board, but still eleven twelve million dollars, which is real money for those departments, and obviously looking at ways to deal with that. Um, and, I, and we're paying obviously close attention to what happens to the federal government. And the, the good news is the forecasting is becoming that the end of the third quarter, beginning of fourth quarter, we may see something beginning to approach life as normal again um, in New Orleans, which means an uptick in sales tax revenue, which will help us all. The next thing I wanted to talk about was Sewage and Water Board. Uh, Amanda and Holly on my staff are meeting every Monday with Sewage and Water Board. Um, the meetings primarily vacillate between one of two topics, with one taking primary, one taking secondary notice, and they can flip flop, but they both revolve, involve billing. One meeting uh, may be about individual bills. We're actually now speaking finally after a couple of years to the people who really handle the bills themselves. And then in turn, they are getting in touch with constituents. And I would say in the last sort of four to six weeks that we've been dealing with this, I've seen more customer satisfaction than in the past. I can't say that I've seen um, complete happiness across the board, but at least people feel like their questions are being answered and they're being heard. So that is some significant progress. Um, and in addition, we're trying to work on some uh, larger more general policy changes, things that Sewage and Water Board already has as part of their policies or should adopt as part of their policies so those bills are in better shape. And then um, aside from this council meeting, we actually do have another committee meeting on the 22nd. I know it'll be of interest to this neighborhood group. The Ad Valorum Committee is meeting with, with the library to discuss um, their budget and I would assume also uh, their their millages and we look forward to having that conversation. Obviously voters spoke resoundingly about that and so I think it's the council's intention to dig back in and see where that stands. So that is my report. Um, I'm happy to answer anything specifically and I hope everybody stays safe and has a very happy and healthy holidays otherwise. All right, does anybody have a question for the council member? Either unmute or go ahead and speak. I, I just have a quick, I, I know this is not related to what he just said, but has the city ever been reimbursed for any of the expenses for the um, hotel collapse? And, you know, is, have, has the city been reimbursed yet? Is that the question? Yeah. For what? For what they, I know they had to, you know, pay for police and they had to pay for, I, I assume they paid for a lot of things when that hotel collapsed. Um, yeah, they paid for a lot of police protection, primarily in fire. I mean, you think even more than police. Uh, the short answer to the question is I haven't received an update from the CAO that the number, and I can't remember if it's 8 million or 12 million, has been reimbursed in whole or in part. The largest problem is, um, you know, the matter is an ongoing litigation. And so, yeah. So, you know, getting paid all the time while there are um, a multitude of lawsuits is going to be a complicating factor. But I know the city obviously has its claim. It's pursuing it. We're going to we'll meet with the CAO um, on Wednesday about some sewage and water board issues. And so I'll, I'll make sure to ask them because I haven't gotten an update on on whether or not we've received any money. All right, thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, Joe, I don't know if you are, are involved in this or not, but has any progress been made on the people that had purchased or at least put in an offer on the old Lindy Boggs Hospital? So that's a good question. Um, I heard that it was changing hands, Mary but I can't remember for the life of me who was buying it. Um, and, and I meant to circle back on that too. Um, I saw some fire trucks there tonight on my way home. So there was some activity around there. Uh, and I know it's been an eyesore for, for everybody for an extraordinarily long time. 
but it was a Jaeger owned property. My understanding was that it was going to be sold. I don't know if it closed. So let me, let me find out about that too. Um, and see if we can we'll tell Chris about that. Yeah, kind please. of tied in with that is, um, you know, it's just the general state of things along Jeff Davis Parkway, starting with the hospital and going all the way down to Tulane. There's been tremendous amounts of vandalism and it's, it's just a wreck. I, it is absolutely a wreck. And I, I guess the city, do they just have no money allotted for that type of thing? Well, for Jeff, I mean, for the hospital, that's a private um, yeah. issue. Um, so that's, that is separate. I mean, uh, and I fully acknowledge that it's been out of commerce and, and looks really bad for a neighborhood that's, that's grown a whole lot in a short period of time. As for the other things, Mary, I, this is what I just don't know the answer to also is, you know, the street name changes on January 1 is the plan to spruce it up in concert with that. That seems to make sense because if, if you know, you're going to start changing the street signs themselves, um, I have certainly have seen the graffiti on places and, and um, agree that the facing stuff isn't the way to handle um, at the same time, we ought to be looking at how to fix that too. So um, we will we will look at look into that as well. I know we've made inquiries um, about that because we've gotten emails from either mid city residents or people passing by. But it's a good time to kind of stop and see where that stands. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Um, I had one question for you, Joe, and, and about the Avalorum committee. Um, so the purview would be only for ballot measures um, with that committee. And does anybody, I guess you could sponsor any sort of motion to be featured for a millage proposal? Yeah, so so there's there's a couple of things. Number one is the Avalorum committee was kind of set up for two initial purposes. One was to sort of examine um, the existing millages and funds that were open and, and things that the city could potentially tap into. And then really as a vehicle to start having conversations about fees in certain places as opposed to um, millages right because the idea on a fee like sewer and water is that almost everybody contributes to that whereas millage only residents and commercial entities contribute so there's a big difference between those numbers um obviously because of covid and, and the impact particularly on nonprofits and um you know frontline workers that piece has been parked for a little bit. We frankly haven't had an ad valorem committee meeting in months. Mm -hmm. So I think the thinking among the council is, um, you know, obviously uh, there was a, a you know, a, a dedicated opposition to uh, defeating proposition two. All of the millages failed. And I think this is an opportunity, I think, for us to have this public conversation with the library about you know, what its millages are, how much they total, what its budget actually um, is, what its budget should be, what it plans on doing um, with, with its reserve. So I think it's an opportunity to have that discussion. The, the hard part is I don't think we'll be able to get anything on the March or April ballot um, because I think everything has to be to the bond commission or at least advertised mm -hmm. by the 27th of this month. And, and frankly, I just don't see there, you know, being enough runway for everybody to be on the same page at that time. Um, but I do think, you know, when voters have spoken resoundingly, on an issue, whatever it may be, you know, it deserves to be vetted publicly and to have that discussed. So, um, you know, we want to start off the library. I think the other ones, to to kind of fully, completely answer the question, are more within sort of the purview of City Hall, right? Because streets are almost exclusively a city function. Um, you know, uh, dealing with the economic development has been largely 
part of the city function, neighborhood housing improvement fund has been. So, um, you know, those need to be discussed. There needs to be good communication. But the fact that there's a separate library board by charter, they have some separate things too, um, I think warrants a discussion. And, and I think part of what we heard from the public was frustration with, with the fact that um, they wanted to have more communication about what happened, how the money was spent, where it was all going, what the size of the millage should be. And this is an opportunity to hopefully mend some fences and begin that discussion again. Absolutely. Um, and I also wanted you to remind people of your motion about uh, trucks and oversized vehicles, since we have a uh, upcoming neighborhood engagement meeting uh, Tuesday the 15th. Yeah, so, um, you know, what I try to do behind the scenes, this is sort of just Jerusalem's philosophy on handling things, is wanting to work and trying to build something through collaboration. And, and sometimes that just becomes tricky and we're just not able to do it. So we file a motion or an ordinance to change the rules um, as a result. And you know, sometimes that means we vote on the ordinance or revise the ordinance as it goes forward. And sometimes it means we hold back on it a little bit um, to give the department a chance to, to kind of put forward some new rules and, and devices. You know, what happened with the truck route um, ordinance is we heard a lot from the administration that they agreed with what needed to be done and they really wanted an opportunity to talk to people. So as Chris pointed out, there's a meeting tomorrow, Chris, right? At six o'clock to really start beginning this conversation between the administration and really neighborhoods first about trucks going through certain places. Or the, the name I remember the most in mid cities having a problem is North Alexander. Um, for whatever reason, seems to be a tremendous issue. But certainly, my neighbors uptown on Henry Clay and right off of Chapatulas have some big problems. So this is this is a chance to engage and um, to make sure that um, the 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 administration hears from the public about what's going on, the problems, um, you know, the the concerns, what's feasible, what's not. And, and making sure that as the administration begins to tighten up its internal rules that people have a say in what that looks like. All right, thank you so much. I put the meeting information in the chat. It was also in the newsletter that, we, that went out today. Uh, last chance for any comments or questions to the council member? Yeah. All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you all so much. Have a good night. All right, on to our next agenda item, or uh, our our house float neighborhood crew captains, uh, Eileen and John. John and John. Remind me of the last name, John. I forget. You dream. Get you. You dream. You have the floor. Let us know what's going on with the crew of house floats. Okay, it's very exciting. Very, very exciting. We are moving ahead. We have almost 500 members in Mid City. Loads of people have been ordering the throws. This is what we got approved, thankfully, from you all to use the logo. And as of today, I just colored this with ink pens. It's like really cute. And uh, you can paint these and put them on necklaces or put a magnet on the back, make it a um, something for your fridge or for your neck. I'm working with the people at Plush Appeal. They have all these gorgeous glass beads, beautiful beads, as well as supplies. This is a local business right here in Mid City. You would be able to string your house float onto a pair of these beads and hand these out, have these mementos for everyone. They just also came up with the balloon. I don't know if you can see that, but this one, it looks like the sewage and waterboard meter. And this one is in particular for Mid City with our 2021 theme, which is Here Come the House Float. Now let me explain why I chose Here Come the House Floats as our theme. 
Nip City is a big, diverse group, huge neighborhood, much like the huge, diverse, unwieldy truck float parades. No matter what the theme is, all the truck floats have their own individual theme. So anybody signing on can theme their house or theme their whole street. Just make it really great. Um, with the truck float theme, you can easily put something up across the front of your house that you could staple that wonderful truck float vinyl petal paper to and then attach other things, the big Mardi Gras flowers or any kind of figures that you decide. I live on Olympia. I'm going with an ancient Greek Olympic theme. I'm going to have the eternal flame. I'm going to have some beautiful Greek maiden competitors. And uh, I'm even putting a Pegasus in there somewhere. But this is a big, big, big moment for all of us. And the nice thing about all of this is we're not trying to take over Christmas or turn it into a uh, drive through the park where there's going to be traffic. So once you get your house listed by December 31st, and that's coming up soon. So you want to go to our um, website, which is crewofhousefloats.org. There is now a form that you can fill out to submit. Your personal information will not be included, just your address. And there will be a map on the 6th of January, which is um, 12th night. Begin decorating, begin building, whatever it is you're going to do. And be ready for the 1st of February. And we're going to have an entire two-week plus two-day Mardi Gras where people can look on maps and they can go to certain neighborhoods and drive past these houses during the daytime. You can also list if you don't have your house driven past at night. I filled mine out today and I said mine would be fabulous all the time. But if you only want yours to be seen in the daytime hours or the early evening hours, you can totally specify that. I understand. We don't want anybody to feel like they're being invaded. So it's very exciting. We have a resources page that's really competent. A lot of the other house floats group or even offering classes of how to make your own a real diy thing as well as giving you a list of artists that you can hire and put them to work since they're all out of work we really really want to make this a beautiful special mardi gras and make it real personal eileen do you have anything else to say i'm a little excitable <laughs> That's a fantastic idea. Thank you for taking over for Mid City. Um, and your enthusiasm, I hope, is really going to show through in your homes and your porches. Thank you. I hope so too. I um, I did put some uh, information out on the Nextdoor app. We're all over um, the Facebook app, and we are also on Instagram. Um, Eileen and I are able to be reached at crew of house floats mc at email.com or gmail.com so anybody that needs to get in touch with us crew of house floats mc at gmail.com or you can go to crew of house floats.org come on y'all let's make mid city mid eileen <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Are you familiar with Stronghold Studios on Bienville? Yes, we've visited with them. Yes. Okay, because they're selling these crowd cutouts. Yeah, the show me misters. Yeah, yeah. misters. Okay. I just wanted to make sure y'all were aware of that because that is supporting some local artists. Um, yes, I designed them and I've got the first pair of. Uh, oh, well, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I just, I'm glad. To, I'm glad to, I was over there the other day and I saw them and I just wanted to make sure that, you know, they were going to get promoted a little bit. So, okay. Oh, Jolene, I'm getting my whole float done by them. Oh, great. 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 Wonderful. Don't move them inside because maybe considered an unpermitted gathering. <laughs> 
No, there's only three. There's only three in a big giant horse. So I don't think I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm out of uh, out of the realm of uh, whatever the limits are. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for taking this time and helping to organize this. I mean, the whole, uh, it's going to make carnival season feel a little more normal, um, mm -hmm. even though there will be a lack of floats and parades. So thank you so yeah. much. And uh, yeah, let us know so what we I'm can just... continue to help you all moving forward and help promote. I mean, I know you guys have the, um, have the deadline coming up. We also had people interested. We started some early planning of a holiday tour that we weren't able to uh, bring to fruition, but we definitely sent out your um, your information, your registration information to those people who were Thank gonna decorate for Christmas, so. Thanks. And listen, I'm gonna push two businesses that are close to my heart. That is Stronghold Studio on Bienville and Plush Appeal on Toulouse. Both mm -hmm. are willing to work with us and are giving us very good prices. And the Robin Nicole studio on Rampart Street are doing these beautiful throws for us. So if you have any more questions, um, let us know and let's support local. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Sure thing. Um, and next to the agenda was actually a cancellation. Um, David Heck from Formwork Development wanted to talk about an RFP that he's working on, um, which would involve uh, development of current public property along the Greenway, I believe is the identified uh, area, but it's actually not even uh, a fully a full plan, but he did want to get out and talk to the community about it. Um, so is Sophie on from... Friends of the Feet Greenway, I thought she joined earlier. Um, so part of this property would be along, it's actually the old sign shop along the Greenway, closer to Broad, that's now being decommissioned by Public Works um, and almost completely moved out now. Um, the I don't know the full details of this proposal, but it would be development of residential properties, um, I don't know if for rent or for sale, but higher intensive use. Um, and I just wanted to share with you that the um, recent board meeting of Friends of Lafitte Greenway had recommitted their uh, principles for the Greenway Master Plan. And those principles include preserving all Greenway area space for community serving uses, including recreational and community amenities, amenities for green space, recreational facilities, public markets, and stormwater management. So development of this type project would really not follow fall fall into what they have or their board has ideas for the future of the Greenway and um, probably wouldn't jive too much with the community as a whole. Um, that master plan process that the Greenway formed was done so through community input and still guides uh, the future and development of the Greenway. Um, so please keep in mind, please uh, pay attention to any notices. And uh, speaking of that, I'll just run through a quick kind of jog everybody's memory on staying up to date on certain um, on certain notices and land use. Um, I know now we're not, we can't have public meetings, but uh, currently um, you can stay up to date on certain land use issues. Um, if you notice in the newsletter, we have a, a NPP process, which is completely virtual. Um, so they're, they're soliciting input directly to them and then uh, they will take that input as part of their application and include it with uh, their application and then get their hearing. But before we even get to that, we can um, stay abreast of any issues and actually review some of the zoning by using the city's resources here uh, to look through the entire zoning code. That kind of would be kind of your first place to start. But uh, you can also see any zoning available to any property by using the city's property lookup tool. And so these, these 
items can be worked in conjunction of looking up a certain property, um, seeing records of it, viewing any sort of definition in the CZO of that property and what sort of land use regulations fall into that area. So definitely a great resource guides. Um, that is just to keep yourself up to date with what the appropriate uses and the approved uses for any spaces are at the moment. Um, so those two websites, the property viewer and the full CZO. And then also um, for any changes or applications, uh, I highly suggest creating this account with the notice me. Um, this has come up many times with uh, lack of effective notice. So if you'd rather be notified from a, there's, sorry, let me start that over. There's any sort of application that would trigger an MPP. So a uh, variance or a zoning request um, only has a small radius of areas of properties that they're required to notify for the MPP process, mm -hmm. as well as community organizations uh, and neighborhood groups that are in that area. But if you also would like to be um, notified of any of those applications or changes, you can use this Notice Me um, tool to get early notifications for um, zoning verification um, notices of any applications that are looking to recertify or investigations of their current zoning, um, changes in zoning applications uh, or zoning re change requests. Um, and uh, variances on properties. So these emails come through directly to you. You can either set, as you can see, there's certain areas where you can just draw a line around um, an entire council district, or you can select the boundaries of an organization. Um, and all these notices will come into your inbox uh, once they are filed and brought to the, uh, to the appropriate bodies. So you can be notified using that notice tool, but then you can also use, sorry, the uh, subscription to the notice of BZA meetings and CPC meetings. Because once an application is received, if it goes through a certain process of MPP, then it will get a, I'm sorry, I can't find the tab that I put it on. Sorry if I'm jumping around too much. Um, it'll be added to the agenda for those boards and bodies to meet, to consider it. So this is the subscription for the CPC mailing list of all their agendas. And let me see if I can find that other one real quick. All this information is, is either easily available or somewhat hidden on the <laughs> City Planning Commission website. Um, so I'm trying to consolidate a little bit of this information that's easier to grab um, from here, just in this little refresher of how to stay up to date and how to stay notice, notified of any of these land use changes. Um, like I said, some large project like this, um, which is actually located in this area would require, I think it's actually right here, the sign shop is along this this area. I think it's possibly these buildings. Um, would require uh, full zoning changes or variance requests um, or both. So if you would sign up for something like this, you would be notified immediately of when those applications would go in and not on the back end or not at the time of once it reaches these uh, these bodies. Um, trying to get your public comment in is crucial. Trying to organize that public comment is also crucial to have a unified front either in favor or against uh, any land use changes. So I just wanted to make sure people were informed about those different tools that are available to everyone. Um, when we're talking about large projects and large development. So please, uh, I know it can be daunting and another step of engagement for all of us to use, but please uh, please sign up for the notice me alerts. They're incredibly helpful. 
for any sort of land use changes around you. So, and Claire had a note, uh, oh, new constructions and renovations by late February. Oh, so there's new changes coming to the tool as well. So, all right. Um, I see uh, Stevens here this evening, uh, neighborhood engagement office. Uh, sorry, sorry, I always leave you for last, Stephen. But did you have any updates from the mayor's office? Sorry about that, Chris. Yeah, just uh, I was looking at some other things and I had to come back to you there. Um, sorry. The the uh, a couple of things I just want to mention. Hello, everyone. By the way, <laughs> good to see everyone. Um, one thing I want to mention is that for those residents in Mid City um, who are living, who live on North and, and South uh, Jefferson Davis, uh, as you know, on January 1st, uh, the, the, the street's name will be changed. And so be on the lookout this week for postcards from the city, um, not only reminding you of that, but to give you some guidance as to um, what's, in, what's helpful. Uh, what's necessary, not even helpful as much as what's necessary, um, uh, uh, you know, to do as it relates to your address change, um, you know, and, and it'll outline, um, let me find it there, it'll, it'll outline some information that uh, will be helpful to you. Um, the city is already made aware certain entities like Intergy and Cox and the Sewage and Ward Board, the Sessors, 311, about the address changes, uh, but there are other entities that we all deal with, the very important um, government agencies or, or, and such, that uh, you have to take a proactive action uh, to notify them about the address change. That's you know the IRS and Social Security Administration, uh, folks like that. So the postcard will outline this information as guidance. Um, not everyone will need it, but I, I suspect um, uh, most of us would uh, need that guidance and that information. So. Um, you know, for those of you on, on the street, uh, be, be um, looking out for that. When we can, um, w when we can, I'll, I'll probably share that with you, Chris, uh, so you can post on to MCNO's website as well in a, in a more of a mass communication as well. So I, I just wanted to mention that um, and, and, and be, be on the lookout for the, uh, the mailing from the, from the city. Um, the second thing I want to mention is, uh, as some of you may be aware, Nord is hosting a toy drive this week uh, through Friday. Um, and uh, so I just want to encourage uh, those of you who can uh, to, to uh, you know, think about uh, uh, acquiring a, a, a new toy and, 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 and bringing it to uh, one of the drop-off points, one of the Nord drop-off points. Um, I think the, the rec centers uh, across town, I think the closest one to Mid-City would be either Treme or uh, Gurnan Brown in, in Lakeview. Um, so just think about that. Distribution will be Saturday on, on the Lafitte Greenway, so not too far from the neighborhood um, for those who would like to receive as well. So I just want to mention that. Um, third thing is, of course, COVID. Um, stay strong. Um, Continue to do uh, what you've been doing uh, to, uh, you know, minimize cases, minimize positivity rates. Um, we're going through uh, a, a bit of a spike. Um, it's more manageable. It's more manageable here than in other areas because we've been responsible for nine months. But it doesn't. It doesn't deny the fact that we're more concerned. Um, and and so you'll see additional actions being taken um, have been taken and and will be taken um, uh, shortly. Uh, but just continue to be strong in attitude and spirit, um, and keep doing the right thing. Encouraging folks to to do the right thing. We're not out of the woods. Um, it's a classic case of when you see the light at the end of the tunnel. You um, you may we all may become more nonchalant. So so don't do that because you know the vaccines are coming, but uh, there's a priority list of our our healthcare professionals, our frontline folks, um, senior citizens, and senior centers, uh, things of that sort. And so it will take time. Um, as as a deputy health director um, shared with me on Friday, 
when I was talking to her, um, she said, you know, expect to wear a mask, uh, you know, well into 2021. September was the month, but uh, but I don't I don't want to say that as a as a finite. But the point is is that you know we're still we're still in need of manifesting the the behaviors over the next number of months that we have in the in the past um, nine months or so. So so I just wanted to you know encourage that um, and 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 basically um, you know have a happy holiday. It's a little different. Um, but I just want to wish you all a happy holiday, uh, and and um, connect with your connect with your family, your friends, uh, via phone. But reach out, you know, be there for each other, um, whether they're they're close or whether or not they're far away. Um, it's a good time to 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 connect um, and 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 show that you know just just a bond. You know, people really people really need that right now. So I don't want to get all psychological on you, but that's all I had. Um, Always appreciate the time, Chris. Thank you, man. Sure. Thank you very much, Stephen. So I have a quick question, if that's okay. So sure. you mentioned that you that there's more coming. Um, so are you implying that there's more restrictions coming down the road, um, more lockdowns, more restaurant closures? No, what, what did you mean by that comment? Just just some just some just some adjustments. You know, we're not we're not doing a major um, a major. Uh, shift but uh there, there may be um additional restrictions on on bars um so there might be a shift back just like the state had to do from from stage from phase three to phase two so uh we're just you know tweaking things and there may be and maybe relatively temporary um but just uh just know that we have we have this 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 spike we have these increasing cases and more more troubling um, is the increase in the positivity rate because the positivity rate is the metric that um, really shows a community spread, um, and so uh, that's 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 always a concerning um, uh, uh, a data point. Um, so, yeah. So, no, so, no, so what data like are you guys using to um, substantiate closing bars again? Are you have you been able to show well, from any sort of contact tracing that this is what's causing the spread? Yeah, I mean, I can't speak to that uh, with with uh, with confidence. I, I do want to defer some of the detail um, to to the medical experts um, on our team and and with other you know with the state and all. But um, you know, the state, the the Louisiana Department of Health, um, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, has the data and and they work in concert with local health departments and and uh, directors such as our uh, our doctor of Egno and and they make these calls based on based on uh, what they're uh, what they know <laughs> yeah think thanks thanks for that crystal clear transparency. I think the transparency is in the hospitals. All right, any other questions for neighborhood engagement? I did have one more question, um, sure. kind of picking up with the little uh, chat box I uh, mentioned. Uh, given that the Street Renaming Commission is having a meeting on Wednesday for input, uh, is there a chance that we could see that little to-do list ahead of time? To see if we had any suggestions on it. Yeah, Mary, I I I don't know much about the renaming. It's the renaming uh, commission is, is is a little bit more of a city council thing. Um, so I don't I don't have an answer uh, for you on that. Um, maybe Claire can can weigh in. But uh, no, I was just referring to the little to do list. You were oh oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. What was your question, Mary? I'm sorry. Give it to me again. <laughs> You said that they were coming out with a list of advice, things that people need, yeah. need to do or should do. And yeah. I just wanted to know if we could see that before the meeting on Wednesday to see if we had any suggestions of things to add or, you know, something, another way of doing something. Yeah. Uh, let, let me see. Let me see. I know, I know we want to mail out um, the, the reminder or the notification that, uh, the name change of Jefferson Davis is coming. 
and um, and 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 then we then we'll communicate directly to uh, the associations. Um, but uh, I might be able to work around that. It would just it would be useful to have that before their their meeting on Wednesday where they're looking for input. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. All right. Uh, last chance for any comments. Well, thank you all for attending this evening. Uh, I want to thank our outgoing board members that are in attendance today, and thank you for your service. And uh, welcome on all of our new oncoming board members for the next year. Um, if you didn't receive the newsletter, uh, please contact me. You can get in touch with myself or the board. At president at MCNO or info to reach the entire board at mcno.org. So here Chris, is... could I ask two things? Sure. Um, you had on your agenda to remind people about the Greenway Supernova. Sure. Mm -hmm. And also about the um, Crescent City Farmers Market moving. Is that a permanent move to the that uh, is Greenway a permanent Farm? Move. So the Crescent City Farmers Market uh, debuted their new market this past Thursday. That the, well, their new home is the Greenway Plaza. So they had fewer uh, they had fewer stalls this week because of the uh, more space dedicated for the Supernova event. But uh, going forward, I think they will have more um, merchants there with more stalls when when those art installations aren't there. So that will be their permanent home. They're still doing the drive-through pre-order market. Um, I believe you order ahead of time or you drive through the parking lot over at uh, Parkway on Sunday mornings. Is that Sunday morning? Yeah, I believe so. Um, those links are in, in the chat. Please check out, yeah, our, our friends at Lafitte Greenway have done a great job with their Supernova event. Um, like it's uh it's been well attended well received well everyone's been mostly well behaved uh and also that space at the uh at the greenway plaza is just going to be a great multi-use and multi-purpose use space for the community and especially for mid-city because that's our uh you know that's our closest access point to that resource of our linear park that we love so much so um, our next uh, community meeting is going to be next year, in 2021, January 11th. Um, if you need to want to present or you had any information for us for that meeting, please always reach out. Um, I don't know if Mississippi Security District is going to be meeting this month. Um, they had mentioned at their last meeting that there wasn't any pressing business. Um, they for, that they could see coming forward uh, before the end of the year. But please stay up to date with their post. Their next uh, meeting would be January. Oh, shoot. I don't think I posted that date. Excuse me for a second. I believe they're meeting on the second Wednesday of the month, which would be January 13th. So. Out there on Thursday. They switched to Wednesdays. Oh, okay. Funny story, they switched to Wednesdays to accommodate the library with a reading program they were doing on Thursdays. And then uh, now they're, they're right. even though they changed for the library, they're not meeting the library, they're still doing right. it virtually. Okay. So. All right. Uh, that's all the updates I have for this evening. Thank you all very much. Um, have a wonderful holiday season. And... Uh, if I don't see you before then, oh, our next board meeting, I'm sorry, is December 29th. So if you'd like to attend as a guest or see any information, new board members, I'll be sending out that information as well. Um, our board meetings are open as are our community meetings. And uh, please welcome the community to attend and uh, yeah, stay involved with us. Thank you so much, everybody. All right. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you.